There's my trumpet. <laughs> All right, so that was the muscles of facial expression, and um, I'm going to continue on with the muscles of mastication. There's only, I think, four that I'm going to talk to you about. So we'll go ahead and dive into those, and then this video will conclude. So muscles of mastication. Well, oh, wait a minute. What is this word? That means to chew, folks. We are chewing. Chewing food. Yummy food, yummy food, bad food. Don't eat this food. That's not really food. That's another lecture. Uh, okay, so here's the first of the four. Temporalis. Just take a wild guess as to where the temporalis is located. I'm going to say the temporal bone. So this is a really, I love this image here, but this is a really nice image. You can see the grain of the muscles kind of heading towards the face, the front of the face, but where does it go? Well, check it out. Here's the top part. It goes under the zygomatic arch over here to this little bitty piece of the mandible. Can you remember what it's called? The little chunk. It's not the condylar process. That's back here. It's not the coracoid process because that's on the scapula. It's the coronoid process of the mandible. So the, where's my drawing tool? Here it is. The, I mean, let's think about this. Is this going to be the origin or the insertion up here? Does the temporal bone move at all? No, it does not. So this is going to be the origin. And whoa, this one's going to be the insertion down here. And so what we're going to get, oh, there goes my dog barking. Hold on. Ah, oh, so many interruptions. Okay, so what we're going to get is the insertion getting moved up towards the origin. Now, what kind of movement does that indicate for the mandible? Well, you have to think about when you open the mandible, it's kind of like a hinge action we got going on here. So this coronoid process is going to get pulled downward away. That's a different muscle. So this is going to move away when you open your mouth. And then to close the mouth, the temporalis is going to forcefully pull that back upwards. So what do we call that? Well, we call it elevation. To elevate the mandible, which is essential in the act of chewing. And we want to be able to do that with force so we can break down our food. So elevating the mandible, temporalis. You can even feel that on the side of your head. If you clench your teeth together and you kind of put your hands on the side of your head, like sort of near your temples, sort of near um, this area up here, you can really feel that. And you can see it too on some people that have short hair while they chew. So next uh, is the this big thick muscle on the side of the jaw. And that's called the masseter muscle. And it is G on one of your pages somewhere. Uh, mass is for chewing, so this is another one. And maybe you can even guess what it does. Let's see if we can figure this out. So, the um, origin is going to be up here on the zygomatic bone, right? That sucker doesn't go anywhere. The insertion is going to be down here. What is that part of the mandible called? Mm -hmm. It's called the angle. And then what about this upright piece, which is called the ramus? So it's going to insert right about here-ish. And then when you use it, this is our rule, I to O, there it goes, right up. So another muscle that causes elevation of the mandible. Same as temporalis, they work together. Is that OK? Can we have two muscles that do the same thing? Of course, and that's totally normal, especially when it's chewing. Um, there's actually quite a few more, but um, we're only going to do a couple more. Okay, so that's the masseter here on the side of the jaw. This one you definitely can feel if you put your hands on the side of the mandible, right where the ramus is, and then clench your teeth. You'll be able to feel it underneath your fingers, and again, you can also see it contracting on other people when they're eating. Okay, a couple more. What is this wacky word? Medial? Here you go, pterygoid, pterygoid. Now there is a reason why it's called that, but we did not talk about the sphenoid bone and all of its crazy pieces in here. 
But anyway, these little doodads right here are called the medial pterygoids. Now let's dissect this and see what we're looking at here. This is the mandible, but look, the ramus has been cut off. So what I'm telling you is that these two muscles that make up the medial pterygoids are on the inside of the ramus, the internal surface of the ramus, which is why in this picture we're kind of looking like up underneath the back of the skull. This is the back view of the mandible and the maxilla. This is like the inside of the mouth area with everything else removed and we're like out the nose from the back. These are the little nasal conchae and the vomer bone. Aren't they cute? So anyway, here's the medial pterygoid and really it has, it's angled a little bit in this picture, but you can see the the grain is running for the most part vertically. So can you guess what this muscle does? Um, notes say medial pterygoid like the masseter, kind of like the masseter, but inserts on the internal surface of the ramus and the grain is vertical. So major action is to elevate the mandible. Gosh, we have so many muscles that do this. And what happens is when you use them independently, which is very coordinated, um, you can actually move your mandible side to side in a most uncomfortable way. Um, and that's not the only muscle that helps us do this, but the medial pterygoids will help us move our mandible side to side and also elevate. All right, last muscle of mastication that we're going to learn is, you got it, the lateral pterygoids. So these are, I mean, they are lateral to the medial ones, but mm, it's kind of hard to tell that on this picture. Look over here, we're still looking at that underneath view. Here they are. And there's two guys in this one. Look at the fibers though, the cells are running horizontally. So it's gonna have a different action. It's not gonna elevate because it's running in the wrong direction to do that. I hope you understand. So the lateral pterygoids, right? The face is not going to move. So neat, neat. Where's my tool here? I better change my color. Okay. Did you see me? I don't know. I can see me when I do that. I don't know if you can. All right. Anyway, so this is going to be the origin end. This is going to be the insertion end. And so a big action we get out of this is what? The mandible goes forward. Stick out the chin. So pretty. So lateral pterygoid inserts near the condylar process, kind of on the neck of that condylar process. And then we also have a part that's attaching to the, like the joint capsule there. And so it's going to pull the mandible forward. And then also, this might be a little tricky to understand, but it helps to depress the mandible a little bit with its, with the hinge action that we get. Um, and then also you can probably guess that it's going to help move that mandible side to side in that most uncomfortable way. All right, so that is the end of this lecture. Oh my goodness, almost 20 minutes. What am I thinking? Um, and you can use the various worksheets that I've given you to um, have some aid in seeing these. Okay, and the PowerPoint is online as well. So I'll talk to you later. Bye.